Hello and welcome back. Till today, we have seen a lot of features about this DLT pipeline. We created a DLT pipeline from scratch and you can see that on my screen. Today, we are going to talk about few more features. The first one is we are going to see how you can read data for a streaming table from a truncate and load table. For example, if your source truncates and load incremental data every time, how you can use that as a source for your streaming table. The second one is we are going to see what is full refresh for a DLT pipeline and how you can avoid streaming table being fully refreshed. And third and the final one is we are going to orchestrate this DLT pipeline using workflows and we are going to see what are file arrival triggers. So if you have not seen our previous video till now, go ahead and watch this video first. Without any delay, let's begin. Okay, I'm back in my setup notebook. Now, you might have noticed till today, whenever we were processing our incremental data, we were adding the data or appending the data into the same order store table. Okay, whether it is for customer or for orders, we were always appending data. But consider you have a case where your source always truncates the data before processing the incremental data. It means the source truncates the table and then loads the incremental data. In that case, our DLT pipeline would fail because streaming tables always requires append only data source as a source. So let's go ahead and see how you can mitigate that scenario. So let me just go ahead and truncate my orders raw table first. So I'll just run a truncate command first. Okay, our table is now truncated. Let's go ahead and add some incremental records into the orders raw table. So I'm going to process three records. Okay, so let me just go ahead and run this now. Awesome, three records inserted. Let's go ahead and validate. So I'll just run select star from and I'll copy the name from here and I'll paste it here. Great. Now, if you see, we only have three records into our source table, which is orders raw. Okay. So let me just go ahead and trigger our DLT pipeline. Let's see what happens now. So I'll go back to my pipeline and I'll just click on start. I'll stop my video here. I'll come back when it is up and running. Okay. Our pipeline failed because of an error. And now you can see this is because of orders branch. So if I click on this, you can see the status message saying failed, right? So let me just click on view logs. And if I click on this, you can see this has failed, right? And this is all because streaming tables always uses append only source as a data source, right? And we have truncated the table orders raw. So how we can make sure that our truncated orders raw table can also be used as a source by the streaming table? The simple option is we need to set one option. So I'll quickly go back to our DLT introduction notebook. So this is where we are reading our orders raw table. You can see it here, right? We are reading it as read stream. So let me just zoom it a bit. And now we are going to add one option here. Okay. So I'll just type option and we are going to add an option, which is skip change commits. And we are going to set this as true. Okay. So I'll just write true. Okay. So this would allow streaming table to skip those commits, which are because of updates and deletes. Okay. So let me now just go back to my pipeline and click on start again. So I'll quickly go back and I'll click on start. Now I'll pause my video here and I'll come back when the pipeline is up and running. Awesome. Our pipeline just completed successfully. So if I zoom in, you can see for orders, we have successfully processed the three incremental records that we inserted into the orders raw table. Okay. And now you know how you can use a source for a streaming table, which is not append only. You can also use a table which is truncate and load as a source. The only thing that you need to do is you need to add a configuration which is skip change commits. Okay. And you have to set that as true. The next thing that we are going to see is we are going to see how you can refresh the whole pipeline in case there is a requirement where you have to refresh all the data sets, how you can do that. So if you scroll to right, if you click on this arrow mark, you can see an option called full refresh all, right? Once I click this, all of the data sets that you see in this pipeline will get fully refreshed. It means all of them will get truncated and again loaded. Now, you might have noticed that we are using streaming tables and one of them is SCD type 2. So if you run full refresh, this table will also get truncated and all of your history will be lost. Now, how you can avoid that scenario? Consider some of the streaming tables you don't want to do full refresh. How you can avoid that? For that, we need to add a table property. So I'll quickly go back to my DLT introduction notebook. And for example, if you don't want to make a full refresh for orders, what you need to do is in table property, you need to add one more property, which is pipelines dot reset dot allowed and you have to make it false okay so it will not allow this streaming table to get fully refreshed so even if you run a full refresh this table will be skipped out of this full refresh now you can also set this for the scd type 2 table so let me just copy this from here and i'll scroll down to scd2 table okay so i'll scroll down where we are creating our scd2 table so if i go down this is where we are creating a scd2 table right so we can add table property here so i'll just write table properties and we can create a dictionary here and we can paste it here. 
Okay, so this will also avoid SCD type 2 tables getting refreshed in full refresh. I'm not going to run the full refresh now, but this is how you can avoid full refresh. Now, I'm going to terminate this DLT pipeline and now we are going to add this DLT pipeline in a workflow. We are going to see how you can orchestrate DLT pipelines using workflow. So let me just quickly go back to our DLT pipeline. I'll hover on the left hand side. I'll go to compute. I'll go to job compute. And I'm going to stop the cluster that is running for this DLT. Okay, I'll click on confirm. So this has stopped. So let me just go back to the left hand menu and I'll go to workflows. And now I'm going to create a job here. I'll click on create job. I'm going to name this as DLT pipeline trigger. Okay. And we are going to add a task which is called DLT pipeline trigger task. Okay. And we are going to select the type as pipeline. I'll scroll up and I'll search for Delta Life Tables pipeline. Okay. And I'm going to select the pipeline. So I'll select DLT introduction. Okay, now you can even check this box in order to make a full refresh, but we are not going to do that. Okay, now what we are going to do here is since we have auto loader already provided in this pipeline, we are going to trigger it based on file arrival. And to create that trigger on the right hand side, you can see an option called add trigger. Okay, I'm going to click on add trigger. And first, I'll save this. And now we have multiple type of triggers. So if I click on this drop down, you can see three of them. The first one is scheduled. The second one is file arrival. The third one is continuous. Now, continuous is being used for streaming. For example, you are getting continuous data. You can go ahead and use continuous. But we already know scheduled is to schedule it as in batch mode, right? You can trigger it based on some timings. But we are going to use file arrival. Now, since we already have an auto loader there and we already know the path from where our auto loader reads the file, we are going to put that location here. So this will make sure as soon as a file arrives at that location, this pipeline will automatically get triggered. OK, now you can go ahead and use any location. You can even use ADLS locations, but we are going to use the same volume location that we configured for our autoloader. So I'll quickly go back to my setup notebook. I'll expand dev. I'll expand ETL and I'll expand the volume that we created, which is landing. And we are going to put the files under files, right? So what I'll do is on a particular cell, I'm going to click this arrow so that I can copy the location. So this is the location where our files would arrive, right? So I'll just copy this. I'll go back to DLT pipeline trigger and I'll paste it here. OK, so this is where our files will arrive and this will trigger a file arrival trigger for our DLT pipeline. OK, now in the advanced, you can set any time between two triggers. Even you can set how much time it has to wait after the last trigger. Now, I'm not going to change anything here. I'm just going to click on test trigger so that we can see if it works. It says success. So I'm going to save this. So our trigger is up and running. OK, and our DLT pipeline is also set up. Now, one thing that I need to do is I'm going to change the pipeline mode into production because once I trigger this, I don't want the cluster to be running, right? Since our pipeline is already in development mode. So I'm going to click on this. So it is going to open my pipeline here. And I'm going to change the pipeline mode to production because I don't want my pipeline to be up and running after every trigger. OK, so this is changed to production now. So production means as and when the execution completes, it will shut down the cluster that is running for this DLT pipeline. So let me just close this now. And our workflow is ready. And this is file arrival triggered workflow. OK, now for this, I don't need to click on run now or I need to wait for a time. Rather, I just need to upload a file to that volume. So I'll quickly go back to my setup notebook and to this location, I'm going to add a file. OK, so I'm going to click on this. I'm going to click on upload to volume. And I already have an orders file created, so I'll click on upload. Awesome. The file got uploaded, right? You can see it here. Let's go back quickly to our trigger and I'll go to runs and let's just wait for it. So I'm just going to wait for a minute here. Great. Now, if you see, it has triggered the pipeline. OK, it is pulling in every one minute and now the pipeline is triggered. So if I click on this particular time now. You can see it has triggered our DLT pipeline. So if I click on this. I can see the pipeline running. OK, now I don't need to wait for this resource. I know that the pipeline would succeed, right? Because we have just added a file for our autoloader. So I'll pause my video here and I'll come back when this is complete. Awesome. Our pipeline execution just completed. So if you can see here for autoloaders, we have read 24 records and that has been processed and our pipeline also completed successfully. And this is now running in production. So if I go to the compute now, so let me just click on this on the left hand side. If, if I click on compute. If I go to job compute. 
you can see the cluster terminated automatically okay so that's the benefit of production mode so whenever we are scheduling our dlt pipelines using workflows we are going to use it in production mode which will make sure that once the pipeline is success or it fails the cluster that you have used for that particular execution will get terminated okay so if i go back quickly to our pipeline so this has completed successfully let me just go back to workflows if i click on the workflow that we created so if you see this has completed successfully okay but our trigger is pulling every one minute okay it is waiting for the file and that is what it does as a part of file arrival trigger it always waits for the new file to arrive okay now i don't need this trigger now so i'll just click on pause okay so now this trigger is paused so even if i put a file here this pipeline will not get triggered anymore now before we wrap up there's one more thing you can always create your dlt pipelines using sql so let me just show you the documentation for that so this is the documentation that you can use in order to create your dlt pipeline using sql commands and creating dlt pipelines using sql is also easy but the core fundamentals remain same okay so if you want to create your dlt pipelines using python or sql you can go ahead and check out the documentation provided by databricks this covers all about dlt pipelines from our next video, we are going to look some more features about Databricks. If you have liked this video, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Till then, keep learning, keep growing and keep sharing.